All right, in the last video, we talked about double integrals just over a rectangular region. And in this one, we're going to talk about double integrals over any region, um, any over any two-dimensional region. Um, so it doesn't just have to be numbers. It doesn't just have to be a rectangle. Um, so there's kind of two different ways, and you'll have to think back to Calc 2 with this. Um, and remember that when you found the area between curves, there were two things that could happen. Either you would have like a top function, and let's call this function, it's some y equals, um, I don't know, let's call it g sub 2. It's a function of x. And then maybe you've got some lower function. And we'll call that one a y equals g sub 1 of x. Um, so again, you've got some top function. You've got some bottom function. And then these would be bounded by two x values. Let's call that one a. And let's call that one b. So if we have a region where we have some sort of a function where we have a function on the top and a function on the bottom, and then we could actually put some numbers to the x's on the left and the right, then we can write out our double integral. We could write it out as the integral from a to b, and then the integral from g sub 1 of x to g sub 2 of x, and we're going to integrate some height, some function of xy, I'm not sure what that is. And then notice that these functions, because we were describing a top function and a bottom function, we're sort of describing them along the y-axis. Those functions are y equals function of x's, so those functions are y equals, so the dy goes with those. The dx's describe the x's, the numbers, the a and the b. Those were along the x-axis, so that's going to go on the outside of the integral. All right, so that's one kind of one example or one thing that can happen. The other thing that could happen is that instead of having a top and a bottom function, we might have some right and left function. All right, so here's a function that's on the right, and I don't know. Here's one that's on the left, So, and right and left kind of as I look at the graph. This one on the right, let's call that one. Now these are x equals, let's call it an h sub 2, and this one is going to be a function of y. It's an x equals, it kind of goes along the x-axis, it's the rightmost, these are all things that I'm describing with the x-axis. So it's going to be a function of y with an x equals, and let's call this one on the left, it also is going to be an x equals, let's call that h sub 1, it's going to be a function of y. And in this one, we would have to bound these functions by, let's call it C and D on the y-axis, by numbers along the y-axis. All right, now this one, when we set up the integral for it, it would be the integral from C to D on the outside. C to D on the outside, those were y values, so let's put dy here on the outside. And that means that dx is going to go on the inside. We're integrating some function. And the x's go from the rightmost, because that is the biggest, the biggest x. The rightmost x has the most positive value. Um, so that one is going to go on the top of the integral. So h sub 2 as a function of y goes on the top of the integral. And h sub 1 as a function of y goes on the bottom. Now the important thing to notice in both of these is that either way, the functions were on the inside integral. We can only evaluate an integral and get an actual number for it if the functions are on the inside and then we have numbers on the outside of it. If those are switched, then we'll end up with functions at the end of that, and if we're looking for volume, that doesn't really make any sense. All right, so the functions need to be on the inside of the integral, and then the outside is always numbers. 
always, no exceptions there. The outside integral is always going to have numbers. All right, so let's do some examples. Okay, so let's find the double integral of x times cosine of y dA, and it's bounded by y equals 0, x equals 1, and y equals x squared. Now, when I do these, in order to set up this double integral, we have to graph the 2D region. You have to have some visualization of which function is on the top or the bottom or the right and the left and how you want to set this up. So always graph them. All right, so the functions that we have here, we've got y equals 0, so that's the x-axis there. We've got x equals 1, so I guess let's put that like right there. There's that x equals 1, and then we've got y equals x squared. That's a parabola. All right, so and if you notice, there's a region that is all in here. So that's the region that we're integrating over. So that's flat on the xy plane. The x cosine of y is our height. So think of that above this piece of paper as a height, and we're finding the volume in between that. All right, so now we have decisions to make because we have to decide whether we're going to do x's on the inside or y's on the inside. So when I look at this, I try to think of which functions I want to do. Do I have a top function and a bottom function, or do I have a right and a left function? Now in this picture, actually, I have both. So I'm going to set this up both ways. Um, the easiest thing, or when I look at this first, and maybe it's just the most intuitive to me, but I see that we have a top function and some bottom function. And when that happens, we want y equals for these. And so that means that on the inside of this, I'm going to have dy. We're going to do or integrate this with respect to y first. So the top function, that is a y equals x squared. And then the bottom function is a y equals 0. So now the x is, and what I do is I look to the... Um, I look along the x-axis, and this shape is bounded by, I'm only looking for numbers now, x equals 0, x equals 1, x equals 0, x equals 1. So there's one way we could, we could set this up. So the other way that we could set this up, so let me rewrite the function inside there, and now I know I want to do dx first. So now, in order to do dx first, I need a right function and a left function. So if I look at this yellow region, I look to the very right of it, and I know I want an x equals, and then I look to the very left of it. So I'm looking at that left function right there, and I know I want an x equals. So if I'm looking right and left, I'm looking along the x-axis, I need x equals functions. On the right side, this isn't so bad, that's the function x equals 1, and it's on the right side of it, so that's going to go on the top. It's the furthest right, the furthest biggest x, and so it goes on the top of the function. The left one, the smaller of the functions, goes on the bottom of the integral, and I need that x equals, so I've got to solve this guy for that x equals, um, and if I do that... What do we get? Square root of y, and it's just the positive part of it. So that square root of y is going to go on the bottom of that integral. Now on the outside, remember that the outside is always numbers. This is always a little easier to look at than the inside of the function, or the inside of the integral. Um, and so I just look for the numbers that y is bounded by. Uh, zero, that's pretty obvious. And up here, See, when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. So 1. So 0 and 1 as well. All right, now it doesn't matter which one of these I, I integrate. Um, let's go ahead and do that bottom one since it's there. So I'm integrating with respect to x first. So I'd get x squared over 2 
cosine of y would stay in there, and I need to evaluate that from 1 to root y, and then I'm going to have to integrate with respect to y. So I plug in 1, I've been plugging in 1 into x, so I get cosine of y over 2 minus, now I plug in root y, and root y squared is y, cosine of y all over 2. And I still need to integrate with respect to y. All right, the integral of cosine is sine of y. And on this next one, hmm, it looks like I need to do a, um, I'm going to do this by tabular, integration by parts or by tabular. So I like to keep signs and everything in there so I don't have to distribute them later. So I'm going to pick u is negative y over 2 and dv is cosine of y. Take the derivative of the first column and the integral of the second. So the integral of cosine is sine and integral of sine is going to be negative cosine. And then I multiply diagonally and the first one is gets a positive sign, the next one gets multiplied by a negative. So when I multiply these diagonals, I'm going to get negative y sine of y over 2, and then I've got three negatives in that next one, so minus cosine of y over 2, and I've got to evaluate that from 0 to 1. So I plug in 1, that's just sine of 1. I guess I could get a calculator out and evaluate that, but for now I'm just going to leave it. Minus, oh this is kind of nice, it's going to cancel. Another sine of 1 over 2, and then minus cosine of 1 over 2, and then I've got to plug in 0. The sine of 0 is 0. On the next term, I'm plugging in y is 0, and the sine of 0 is 0. That one goes away. And then the next one, cosine of 0 is 1. So I'm subtracting a negative there of 1 half. Those guys cancel, and it looks like I'm left with negative cosine of 1 over 2 plus 1 half. Okay, let's do an example. Um, if I took the integral from 0 to 3, and then the integral from y squared to 9 of y times cosine of x squared dx dy, if you go to evaluate this, notice that the inside part is the x's and we would want to integrate cosine of x squared. And I don't know how to do that without a computer system. I can't integrate that. And so there are times when we'll be able to flip the or reverse the order of integration. So instead of doing x first and then y, we do y first and then x, and then we'll actually be able to evaluate the integral. All right, so here's how to reverse the order. So we can't integrate this. So we need to reverse the order of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a picture of the 2D region. I'm going to draw a picture of the xy bounds here. So I'm not worried about the y cosine of x squared, I'm just worried about all of these bounds. If I look on the inside, I've got x equals 9. Maybe I'll write some of these out. So I've got x equals 9, and I've got x equals y squared. So x equals 9, somewhere over here on the right-hand side, because it's the bigger one. And then x equals y squared. So that's a parabola that's going to be faced towards the x-axis. Okay, so there's what I've got so far. And then I look at my y bounds, and it looks like y is in between 0 and 3. All right, so I can erase the bottom part of this, maybe, if it will allow me to. Oh, good. So I can erase the bottom part of it, 
and then it goes from and I just write just then it goes from zero to three. I think I just wrote from zero to zero. Okay, so from zero to three. So when y is equal to three, let's double check. When y is equal to three x is equal to 9. So and what I was checking for is to make sure we had this whole parabola, that it didn't chop it anymore. Okay, so now what I need to do is switch these. And I need to switch them so that I'm integrating with respect to y first. Now if I'm integrating with respect to y first, I need a top and a bottom function. I need a top and a bottom, and they've got to be y's. All right, well, the top, y would equal, if I'm looking at this function here, and I solve for y, I get that y is going to be root x. So that's going to be my top function, and the bottom function is going to be 0. And then I'm going to integrate with respect to x at the outside, and I'm just looking at the numbers, and if I look at that x-axis, the numbers that x goes to and from is 0 to 9. And now if you look at this, I can integrate. The integral with respect to y, I get y squared over 2, that cosine of x squared stays in there, evaluate it from 0 to root y. Leaving the rest of the integrals. And, I'm sorry, that was root x. Should have been a root x right there. So if I plug in root x, root x squared is just x. So I get x cosine of x squared, and that's an x over 2 still. Now I need to integrate with respect to x. And because of that x out in front, this is now integrable. If I choose u as x squared, du is 2x, dx. So that means that x dx is going to equal 1 half du. So now if I make a bunch of substitutions into here, um, I still have that 1 half from this 1 half then x dx is going to give me another one-half. Then I'll have cosine of u du. Um, so now I can integrate cosine. We get sine, so that would be sine of x to the fourth over 4. Notice when I have u's, I didn't put the bounds on there because 0 and 9 are x's and not, sorry, that should be a square. 0 and 9 are x's and not u's. And so now I can plug in my 9, so 9 squared is 81, so I get sine of 81 fourths.